Hi, this is Patrick. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being on this Facebook Live. I want to uh, jump in here. What I want to talk about is how to have an incredible 2020. And I'm going to talk about opening doors and closing doors. And I've written some notes down here and I'm going to go through. And it has been a long day. I've been with some all my clients all day long in conversation about this very thing. So I wanted to share with you some of the stuff that I have learned today. And uh, one of the things that I'm very clear on is that uh, for most people, 2020 is gonna be just a version of 2019. It's like uh, 2020 is going to be a uh, 2019 1.5. It's not gonna be 2.0. And uh, so the reason I say that is because it looks like we're going to start repeating what we've done before. It might look a little different, but it's sort of the same pattern. So tonight I wanna to suggest that there's a way that we can start to get out of that pattern uh, and move into something completely different. And so that's what I wanna have a conversation about. So let's start with a visualization. We're all, uh, we're all sitting around this big well you know, imagine this well and there's a bucket with a rope and uh, we're all incredibly thirsty and we're just kind of milling around and we're looking down into that water down there, bucket with a rope in hand, but nobody's throwing the uh, bucket down. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's going for the water. We're just kind of all milling around and looking at it. Now, let's imagine that that bucket is that all that water represents aliveness in our life. It represents challenge in our life. And we're just looking down there because down in the process of life, half the water down there has some pain in it from just the experience of being and living life. And half of that water down there has uh, incredible possibility and incredible uh, um, uh, uh, just what we can accomplish in our life down there, excitement in, in that water, but it's half and half. So it's accomplishment, it's excitement, it's transformation, half the water and half the water has all this uh, pain that just goes along with living our lives. And so the reason we don't throw the bucket down is because we want to be figure out a way to be very selective about the way we live our life. I think we don't throw the bucket down because we don't want the experience of half the water having that challenge and that pain that we felt in life before, and uh, we don't want to risk it. So we'd like to throw the bucket down if we were sure that we were going to get the transformation and the excitement and all of what we wanted to create, we'd be great throwing that bucket down, but now we're just in hesitation. So I think um, it's been my experience talking with people and looking at myself that 2020, to have it to be a spectacular year, we're gonna have to throw the bucket down there and we're gonna have to really take what comes along with the fact of being alive. So aliveness would be the goal, to really live in aliveness throw the bucket down, grab the water. So I have made some, as I said before, I made some notes about this. And um, I wanted to start with the fact that this bucket has a bunch of pain. And some of that pain is uh, comes from this stuff that we're carrying in the past. Stuff like a backpack that has a bunch of rocks in it that we can't see that's invisible to everybody else. But all these events that have happened to us, even in even in 2019, there's been events and stuff that have happened to us that have been painful or difficult. All you got to do is think about the worst decision that you made all year long or something that you might regret or something that happened to you. And we certainly don't want to repeat that or even before that, uh, in, a, in, in previous years, we just don't wanna, we don't wanna have that experience again. So what we're gonna do is kind of file that away and what we sacrifice then in not, in not jumping in and not going into adventure and not making bold declarations is what we sacrifice, as I said before, I think is our aliveness. So 
If you want to create an amazing 2020, you can go on this kind of journey with me. So the first thing would be in this journey, that as far as I can see, at least for me, join me in this one, is to start to put closure on the year 2019. That is the question, How? what was the best decision I made in 2019? And what is the worst decision I made in 2019? And then sit back and go, what was, take it one step uh, deeper and go, what was the lesson that I learned from both of those? What can I take with me rather than carry on with the pain? Start this process of completing the year, complete stuff. So um, how do we, how do we do completion? So I think there, are, there are some things that, that really I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, that I've listed that I'm going to work with. And one of them is find people that I've had broken agreements with and complete on those agreements. Things that I've said I was going to do that I didn't follow through on uh, connections that I, that I had, in, that I said I was going to make with people that I didn't do. And uh, uh, all these agreements, small ones or bigger ones that I didn't keep that somehow I justified. Now, to complete 2019 for me, that means that I'm going to call people, write people or talk to people that maybe it feels a little uncomfortable. But I need to do that so I can get complete, either apologize or make a re renegotiate the agreement or just talk about getting uh, uh, getting in connection with them again. Um, find people, find people in our lives. Here's the second one. Find people in our lives that we have resentment toward and the resentment toward people is another one of those rocks. So how do you get over resentment? If you were wrong or something happened, one of the ways that I think you can get over resentment is take a look at, um, uh, how you can serve this person. Brian Clemmer, one of my great mentors, used to say that writing a note to a person or calling them up or just connecting with them, not telling them I have a bunch of resentment around you or I didn't didn't like what you did or didn't uh, didn't appreciate you or all of that stuff that's just our venting and maybe makes us feel better, but doesn't do anything for the relationship. He said, heal the relationship. Just find out if you can serve that person or ask them how they're doing or whatever to just start to let go of that, that resentment that you carry with us. So we all have some of that going on. Um, uh, find, and along with that, on the other side of that one, find people who've influenced you in a positive way and acknowledge them. I know I have a, I have a short list of people that have been in seminars with me uh, that had trained me or that have been important to my life. And I've really been moving fast in my business and all this kind of stuff. And I really haven't gone back to a complete acknowledgement of the difference they've made in my life. And I want you to think about some of the people in your life who made a big difference in your life in one way or another. Maybe it was a single incident, or maybe it was just a whole relationship in total and what we can do to be complete with them is to let them know that we appreciate what they have, uh, what they've done for us or being in our lives. Um, I have, I've talked about this one quite a bit with you guys on this, on this Facebook live, but this one's called clean out your closet and clean out your garage. This is the actual physical uh, manifestation of getting rid of stuff that you haven't used for a year. Um, turn it over to somebody else who can use it, give it away, do sell it, whatever you want to do is to get, get into the process here of letting go. And I know that I've got some like old fishing equipment that I'm never going to use or other equipment or tools uh, I love tools because they, you know, they have, you feel powerful. I, I guess some of the men can relate to this because you can have all this, but I have enough tools so I can, I can cut them down by half. And there may be some people out there that can really use them rather than me waiting around for, for me to construct a, a house or something when I'm not going to do it and get rid of stuff. So there's old pictures you have, there's jewelry you have, there's stuff that just let's, hey folks, let's unload it. And, and pass it on into the universe to open a space for something to occur. I think 
perhaps that would be a great way to start to to uh, the, to close the door on 2019. Um, let go. I I this one's a tough one, but this is about reoccurring goals. All of these things that we keep reoccurring goals. Like I've said for years that I'm going to get my PhD. I'm going to go back to school and get my PhD. Well, it's been about five years that I've had that recurring goal. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I, I've got whatever I've got to go to battle with now is what I've got to go to battle with. I'm 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 going to uh, I'm going to have to work off of the schooling and knowledge that I have and learn from all my clients and learn from the people out there and keep up my education in a different way. And maybe even letting go of all that gets me closer to, to wanting to do it. I don't know. But all of those goals that you said you were going to do, that you know you're not going to do, this is a great time to look in the mirror and go, I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to set that as I'm not going to set that as a goal. I'm not going to set myself up to lose. Even though it makes me feel good that someday I'm going to do that, I don't think that uh, that serves us. That's just circling the well and not getting the water. Um all right, there is something called uh when we when we feel that there were people in our life who really may have wronged us or done something very painful um that we feel that was done to us and I think there's a process called forgiveness and forgiveness has a lot of baggage attached to it because there's a, there's a religious aspect to it and all kinds of stuff but I'm just going to define forgiveness this way. You will decide that you are no longer going to hold that event or that person responsible for the quality of your life. Let's let go of all the crap that we put around forgiveness, that we've got to like the person, that we got to want to associate with them, or that we become holier than thou or any of that crap. Just here's the, the definition again. I will no longer hold this event or this person responsible for the quality of my life, I am going to move on. That is a process, at least for me, of forgiveness. And so that's a rock out of the backpack. Um, now, if you really want to challenge yourself, here would be the challenge. The challenge would be to move past forgiveness into gratefulness. Now, most of us can't make that leap. I can't look at these things that have happened in my life or I'm, I'm unwilling to look at these things that have happened in my life and go, okay, uh, how can I, how, uh, that I would have been much better off if that hadn't happened. Uh, what I'm talking about here is actually what I said, what I talked about earlier, what I'm going to be in practice of is really appreciating the lesson that I learned from that event. As painful as it was, or as great as it was, it's all kind of on the same spectrum. To appreciate <laughs> what I have learned, to be grateful for this occurring because of what I've learned. Now, if I can put all of that stuff into sort of a package and see the context is to be current, to be complete. The context is to operate from more honesty and some some uh, radical honesty in my life. Quit blaming people, circumstances, or other things for the fact of my miserable luck, lack of progress in certain places in my life and move on and throw this bucket down into the well. I think I have a better chance of creating a 2020 that's spectacular and new and adventure and um, helps me with my purpose of making a difference on this planet. So now, so you start to close the door on 2019. What does it mean to open the door on 2020? How do we create some results there? Once we get this water, we've thrown our bucket down. So, I think that you want to start with understanding your purpose and getting very clear on why you're on this planet. And I think it's a lot less complicated for us than we think it is. So part of coaching, this is what I'm doing when I'm working with people. And what I work with people on is designing your life. Designing your life. Because you get to design it. It doesn't design you unless you let it. So you get to design your life. And that's what I'm doing with my clients. And one of the things is to
to make bold declarations about what you want to do, what you're committed to do. Bold declaration is a statement out loud in public that this is what I am going to accomplish. And once you've made a, a, a public statement like that, there's going to be some accountability if you have anybody around you at all that understands transformation. You understand that a bold declaration is something people will turn to you and say in one month or two, two months or six months, did you accomplish what you were going to accomplish? So most people don't want to make bold declarations. We want to circle the well. We don't want to say, I'm going to accomplish this, go to this place, do this thing, because we will be held accountable. But accountability is where the action is. So bold declaration. Put your money and your time where your mouth is. That is putting, for me, that means putting my commitment and my time. That means taking a look at all of this stuff that I have around me that's kind of superficial. Ooh, wouldn't that be a good idea? Ooh, wouldn't that be great? Or wouldn't you want to do a movie about this or change this or do that? All the stuff that takes me out of focus. Now is the time to get focused on what's important. You have a certain amount of energy when you wake up all day long. That's life energy. That's aliveness. And you can scatter it all over or you can focus it. And I think making a bold declaration Focus on what's important to you. And if it's not important, now's a good time to un start to unwind ourselves. So 2020 is about what's important to you, not to me, not to what other people say, not to what magazines or, or, uh, or the TV or Internet says we should be like, but what's actually important to you. Get the joy in that. You get to choose it. Um, prepare for a learning process in 2020. If you are an expert already <laughs> and there's nothing to learn, you're just going to have a repeat of 2019. Be open and curious to what's going to happen here. So that's another way of, of throwing the bucket down. Uh, be prepared in 2020 for periods of time where you're not good at something and you're learning it and it's difficult, but you're moving toward. So at the end of 2020, you are in a different place, space, different than you were when you started because you have gotten, a, you're into the process of learning and discovering. Um, now, one of the things about making bold declarations is rearranging your life to support the declaration. I remember a great story I had a woman in one of my trainings who wanted to, uh, she was in a network marketing company and she wanted to go to the next level. Now she was working hard and she knew that to go to this next level, to do this push that she was going to do, it was going to take a lot of time. And her kids were already kind of complaining about the time she was using in network marketing. So she got some coaching and she took, took a training and she decided, okay, this is, I've got to do something with it. So she got her kids together and she said to them, I'm going to take you all to Disneyland for three days. If you can support me in getting to this next level, if I don't get to this next level, the vacation is off. Now, where do you think the kids were from then on? Geez, mom, are you making your calls? Have you, have you had some home visits with people? Have you had coffees with them? Have you done your presentations? <laughs> now they were all over her. So it was enrolling people into being, supporting you by seeing what's in it for them. And they're going to start to support you. Of course, this takes a lot of courage because you've made a bold declaration. You're going to do it. And inherent in bold declarations is a possibility that you don't make it. So if you want it safe and easy, Stick with 2019 or, 2000, or 2020 will be 1.5 and uh, just stick with that. And, you know, then you don't have an issue, but you're not going to feel aliveness at the end of 2020. Um, finally, I think one of the greatest things you can do, and I'm going to pitch this here, is to find yourself in uh, in a coaching environment, somebody that can hold you accountable a sm whether it's a small group, whether it's your network marketing team, or what the things that I do is executive coaching. So if you want really to set up and, and have me help you design your life, I'm really willing to do that and jump in with you. All you have to do is Facebook message me and we'll set up a time and we can talk about it. And uh, 
I would, I would, I would love to help you or your small group together to help you design your life. Um, that's, that's it. So closing the door on 2019, celebrate the wins that you've had, celebrate the decisions that you, that didn't work out, learn from them and let's close it off. And now throw this bucket down and the experience of aliveness is going to come from our bold stepping into 2020, having a great time with it. Know there's going to be ups and downs and um, enjoy the ride in 2020 and make it the best year of your life so far. Thanks for watching this Facebook Live. You guys are awesome. And we'll do this Facebook Live again on another topic, maybe more into 2020 and more into some of the stuff that we've talked about. Um, love you guys. Have a great evening. And we'll see you on the next Facebook Live. This is Patrick Dean for PatrickDeanCoaching.com. I will talk to you soon.